There is so much that goes into training racehorses. You need to have the animal themselves, you need to get the feeding right, you need to get the shoeing right, and of course you need to train them. But something we hear a little bit less about is equine osteopathy. What better place though to learn about it than Sir Beale Stables, home to our champion trainer, Bupat Seymour. There are so many things that go into training our equine athletes and keeping them fit and well and the role of an equine osteopath is a huge part of it but actually not one that we hear too much about so Rodani here is going to be our model and Shirley's going to explain exactly what it is that you do because it is something that, that's very important we don't hear too much but for people that are new to it what exactly do you do? Well. I am an osteopath, like you said, and a physiotherapist. So basically, I work on the skeletal system of the horses, and I adjust any uh, restrictions in the spine or in the joints, and uh, also work on the muscles at the same time. Wow, so yeah, hugely important for any athlete. So he's your new patient, yes. should we say. What are you doing first? Are you assessing him? Are you working on him straight away? So first we will assess him. We'll see um, how his, uh, all of the joints, how they are moving, the mobility, if there's any tightness in the muscles, uh, how the tendons are doing, and uh, the fetlocks, how they're, if they're sore, if they're not, so that we know what uh, we are working with. And how do you find that out? Is it just a, a matter of, sort of pressure points, or how does it all work? Well, if you want, I can show you how yeah, it works now. Please. I'm, I'm very interested. Ranu very kindly come early today to help us out with this, so we thank <laughs> you. All right, so first we will check the pole, how it is moving. If it's moving in every direction, if it can, if there's any kind of restrictions. For example, now you can see he's a little bit and it's a little bit uh, reluctant to give me his head onto this side here, bending onto this side, so then we'll check onto this side here. So a lot of what we do is, there you go, you see here, he is able to move a little bit more freely. So that to me tells me that his neck is bent towards the right side and he's difficult in bending towards the left. Oh. So already there we know there's a little bit of restrictions that needs to be, uh, to be worked on. So is that something quite common in racehorses, that they might bend better to one side than the other? Any racehorse, yes, and uh, any sports horse. Mm, okay. Any jumping, endurance, um, dressage, flat racers, they're all built the same. So it's just the different kind of, um, you know, the different sports that they're in. But otherwise, a lot of horses have the similar kind of restrictions, yes. Mm, so now you've identified that issue, what's yes. the next step? So now what we continue is then, <laughs> We just see how he's doing for the rest of the body. Check out the tendons. Well, it's just a little bit of a nudge there. See that everything is all right. Checking the shoulder. Oh, oh. We want to see if the mobility is good. Oh, oh. There you go. So here I'll say there's a slight little restriction in the shoulder. The elbow is looking fine. Oh, oh. Easy, Easy. And I guess with older horses, he's getting on a bit now, you're going to find more issues than you would with a two-year-old. Yes. Yeah. Just wear and tear. The wear and tear, the usual, yes. The more mileage that they have, the more restrictions uh, they might have. But mind you, some horses are stronger than others and some horses can take more um, more mileage than uh, others. Mm -hmm. And what are you doing now? What are you looking for now? Easy. I'm checking out the mobility of the spine, seeing if there's any, and you see how the fluctuation there in the, in the muscles, so there's a little sensitivity going on there, seeing how the muscles, tightness of the muscles, you see is a little bit here in this area. After that you want to test and see how the, uh, how the spine is moving. You see, there is some restrictions coming onto my side here. Wow. Oh, oh. And you can tell that from the way he's acting yes. primarily. He's not particularly oh, oh. enjoying that. Not really. <laughs> he's more able to bend with his neck towards the right side. He's got a slight little uh, restriction in the shoulder. Not too happy in the wither area, a little bit in the lumbars. His pelvis needs a little bit of work on this side, for example, and then you have the hock. All right, anything wow. else on this side? I haven't found any issues in the tendons, the fetlocks, so those ones on this side, they're doing good. Okay, so we're 50% of the way through the there initial you go. Sort, of, <laughs> sort of thing. I can see why it takes some time. Wow, okay. 
So then how would you set about correcting those issues so much as you can without a vet? Well, what we do then is uh, the mobility part, the adjustments. So now we will have to uh, find out how he is on the other side mm -hmm. and um, then we'll do uh, the assessment on the other side and then we can find out what we do. So basically the same again, mirroring what you did. And exactly, yeah. And I guess you're not expecting the same because why would it be the same on both sides? Some horses have the similar uh, issues on both sides. Some horses are more restricted on one side, having more uh, problems on one side than the other. So it's all individual, really. You can't really assess a horse uh, from all points of view, like uh, all same horses are the same. Easy boy. Then again, just checking how his muscle is doing here. So on this side, he's, he's softer, it's nicer. It doesn't have any strong uh, contractions as on this side here. Here he was having more reaction. There you go, easy boy. And you see on this side here, he's moving more freely than what he did on the other side. Mm -hmm. oh, oh. Easy boy. So basically what we have found out now is that his neck is more bent towards the, uh, the right, making it difficult going to the left, while his lumbar is more bent towards the left side, difficult going to the, uh, to the right. Ho oh, oh, ho, easy boy. Come on. Really easy. Ho oh, oh. easy, 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 good boy. So again, just checking the tendons, seeing if there is any restrictions there. Here we have a slightly restriction in the hip. It's easier going forward then going backwards. Easy boy. And could any of what you're finding be sort of stiffness because he hasn't raced in two months? It or could it... be because of that. It could be because he of his age. Mm -hmm. There's a numerous of things. So it could be, the stiffness could be due to, yes, that he hasn't been racing. It's the same thing as us. If we don't do anything for a long period of time, then of course we stiffen up. So yes, that is definitely um, a possibility with that. But also it could be just of his age that he's been racing a lot before, just because he's not racing now, he has a history of racing. So next up is now we start working on, um, on the body. Mm -hmm. So now I will start working on the muscles to help release a little bit of the tension and then we'll go on to adjusting the, the pelvis, the hips, um, and then we'll go on to the lumbars, so the lower back of the horse and work ourselves forward basically. So we said that he had a little issue in the pelvis on this side. So right now we're just gonna help loosen up the muscles. Easy boy, easy. Easy, 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 easy. There's one thing also that is affecting also a lot the body, the fascia. So if you cut through the fascia, you will create some uh, scar tissue. And in order, sh easy, easy, easy. You have to help the body release that scar tissues so that you get the mobility back. Now this boy has been castrated. So there's something that is called the gelding scar. So we need to release that gelding scar also at the same time because that will help release any uh, problems in the pelvis. Really? Any lay hips. I've yes. never heard that before. That's interesting. Easy boy, easy, easy. Easy. Good boy. So you see he's moving a lot, he's not sure, but at the same time he's sighing, he's chewing, he's playing with his lips. So he's, that he's to me is happy. an indication that yes, he's understanding, we're good, easy. Some horses might not like this, so we'll see how he's doing. Easy boy. So effectively we're just um, mobilizing the fascia in this area. And some horses might find it discomfortable uh, in the first few, uh, yep, there you go, in the first few tugs. But after that, they normally start relaxing and accepting and understanding that we are actually here to help them out. Easy, easy, yep, oh, oh. Good boy, easy. Good boy, easy, easy. And would you do anything different if this was the middle of the season and he was he was racing? Obviously, it's a treatment that can happen. It's not you don't have to have a as with medication. There's no withdrawal time. This is something you no. could do throughout the season. 
What you can do, yes, uh, you can uh, work with this throughout the season, but I would never. Good boy. But I would never. Um, I would never say that let's do the treatment just before a race, for example, because if it's the first time that we're working on a horse, you are creating a whole new balance, which the horse is not used to working right. anymore. So it's, it's a completely new uh, mobility. All of a sudden, instead of the horse going like this, the horse can actually take long steps. So at the same time, the muscles, they need to strengthen up. Mm -hmm. So it's like us after, uh, after going to the gym and we start new, um, if we are um, lifting heavier weights or anything like this, well, our muscles get tired. It was the same thing with these horses. Yeah. All of a sudden you get a range of motion which is longer than what they would normally have. So the muscles have to work in a different way. Wow. So until the, the muscles get to uh, get used to it, then it will take time. But so a week before the race, that is at least, but because you always have to have a day off after and a light training the next day, and then okay. you can start. Right. So if the horse isn't used to it, I would never recommend the horses to be worked on a week before. At least 10 days or something like that before. So Because you also want to be able to train the horses correctly in a new balance and get them strong enough before the race. But mm. if they're used to it, then I don't see any problem. There you go. Easy. So now we've got a good range backwards, good range forward, easy. So we go to side two and repeat, basically. Yes. On this side, he wasn't too bad on the pelvis, but he had a little bit more on the hips. So I will never just work on one side. Uh, it's always, even if there is no uh, restriction on, on the other side, basically I just like creating a little bit more mobility and just helping out the joints anyway because if you do on one side it's always good to help uh, and mobilize on the other side also. Mm. He is being a very good boy this guy. Well, he is because it is quite a long process the whole the whole thing. Yes it is. You see why you're not doing too many in one day. Oh yes. <laughs> All right so now we have adjusted the pelvis. So the reason why I became an osteopath after starting off as a physiotherapist is because I saw that just working on the muscles isn't going to solve the issue, right? So it's not, you have to look at the body in a whole. Mm -hmm. So just working on the muscles, if the problem is from the spine, well, whatever you do, it's if the problem is in the spine and you just work on the muscles, the problem is still going to be there and vice versa. If the, the problem is the muscles, but you work on the spine, well, it's never going to really leave. So you need to work on the two together. I see. So it could be that he's feeling something in his foot, but it's come from his back or the other way around. It could be that, yes. And because of compensation for what is going on over his back, it's coming down in his foot right. and vice versa. Something that starts there can then go upwards also. I see. So everything is linked together. Easy, Papa. All right. And I'm, I assume that often you'd be doing this and you'd find something and you'd have to say to the, the owner or the trainer, this horse needs to go for a scan. That would be yes. kind of a, a bad case scenario. A bad case scenario, but if we, we have to work as a team. Mm -hmm. okay? It's not just me, not just the vets, not just the farrier, not just the trainer. It's everyone working together. Even the grooms, they're the ones that tell us, oh, there's a cut here, there's something here. The horse didn't look good this morning. Oh, the horse is amazing. Yeah, he feels good. He's... So they are just as uh, big of a part of the, of the puzzle as anyone else. So we have to work as a team. So tomorrow, will he, will he feel like we do after a, a, in a big session in the gym? Or will he feel a lot looser? He will feel looser, but at the same time, uh, since his body isn't used to the mobility, he might feel like us after a treatment that we are quite sore. Uh -huh. This is why I don't re recommend that uh, horses be ridden the same day or the day after the, uh, the session. And also, if there's anything, if the horse has a really bad back, which this guy doesn't really have, uh, then I would recommend two, three days off with no riding, just uh, flat work, uh, sorry, ground work. Right. He's got about five months to recover, so. <laughs> <laughs> right now what I'm doing, I'm helping mobilizing the diaphragm and the organs. Ho, ho. Essentially, it's the same thing with the organs. They get their innovation from the nerves coming from the spine, so. Just 
like working on mobilizing the entire system. Oh, good boy. Good boy. Well, what does the chewing that he's doing kind of, or the lip wobbling signify? The chewing is him enjoying it, yes, but uh, the lip smacking, if you call it. Yeah. Could be that he is a little bit unsure because, hey, good boy. It is uh, my first time working with him. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. We'll do on the other side. Ho oh, oh, ho, easy. So something that um, owners and trainers, riders can do on their own to help the horses is stretching. Uh-huh. And you that see, is something that... People call the carrot stretch. The carrot stretches, yes, they're really good. But don't forget the legs. Uh-huh. Always you have to uh, stretch the legs forward, backwards, the hind legs forward and backwards. Interesting. Because it's, it's what I'm coming, when I'm coming in here and I'm uh, increasing the mobility, that's great. But then you need to uh, do your part also at the same time. Yeah. And you need to, uh, to keep the mobility going. Good boy. Oh, oh. Easy, okay, easy, easy, ho oh, oh. ho, easy. Good boy. Ho oh, oh. Is Equimony just you or do you have a team? Equimony within the therapies, yes, it's just me. But I have uh, my partner. My business partner, Olga, she is working with me on the natural supplements that we have. Okay, wow. Well. Because we cannot, um, we cannot work inside, right, of the horses. So this is why I have combined the therapies with uh, natural supplements to help with, uh, with the body. Okay. The organs, like I said, it's the same principle. Where do they get their, um, their information from? From the nerves that come from the spine. Now, if there's any kind of uh, immobility in the spine, well, that is going to affect the nerves coming to the muscles, but also coming to the organs. Right. So while I adjust on the outside, the natural supplements will then come on the inside and they will help uh, whatever needs to be helped on the inside. Okay. Well. Right, so now we said he had a little issue in his, in his shoulder. I'm just going to, easy, 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 oh, oh. easy, good boy, easy, oh, oh. Easy, good boy. This is something that you can do at home. Mm -hmm. Go in a circle. On it wrong. <laughs> no, easy. Oh. This is good to help mobilize the shoulder. So you go circles on the inside and circles on the outside. Oh, oh. easy boy. So you say everyone should be doing this with their horse. Within reasons. Mm. Easy, good boy. Easy. The one thing you should remember is never stretch a cold muscle. Right. So if you want to pull the leg forward to get the creases out of the girth, that's all right. But the stretch should be held for about 20 to 30 seconds. Okay. And only after, after that, the, um, only after the, the muscle has been warmed up, either from training or from doing this kind of therapies. Easy. Easy. Good boy. Easy. Good boy. Easy. All right. So we said on this side he's not really bending well. So we're going to start on the other side. Okay. Towards the area where he is easier to go to. Ho ho. Easy. Hey, no biting. Mm -hmm. I think he thinks he's getting treats. Easy, 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 easy. Hey, 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 no biting, no biting, no biting. Good boy. Do you ever do this outside or do you always really need to be in a stable? In the box, yeah. Oops. 
outside there's always a lot of commotion, you know, horses coming and going, so I find that when we're here it's, uh, it's easier. And I will go through the entire neck like this. Oh, oh easy. Are you finding that you're just super busy, that there's a real demand for this? Yes. It is starting now that people are understanding that they need to uh, take care of the horses also physically if they want them to perform. Yeah. But this boy doesn't have too many issues, so that's really good. That is very good. It does seem like a lot that we're doing, but everything has been like very light on him, so he's not really hugely uh, restricted. Easy, easy. So we should get another season out of him then. Yeah. No biting. So any type of therapy is good for the horses, all right? Mm. Everything that is increasing the, uh, the flexibility of the muscles and the joints, the mobility, uh, giving pain relief, all of these therapies, this is something what um, an athlete would need. Yeah. Both humans and, uh, and horses. And important that we stress that you spent many years training to do this. It's not something, apart from the, the stretches that you showed us, it's not something people can do themselves. No, preferably not. It, uh, it takes a lot of years to, uh, to become qualified and uh, knowing what you're doing. Because whatever I've been doing here, I've been doing for many years, trained many years. So, of course, you always want professionals and um, accredited people that are actually able to do it properly so that you don't injure your horses. Yeah. So, also, don't try this alone uh, with yeah. your horses because, as you see, when I'm standing behind the horse, for example, there's, there's a huge risk of injury. So, mm -hmm. don't injure yourself and don't injure your horses, basically. Mm -hmm.